The Dalish prisoners escaped safely. We got them away, free and clear. Good. Whatever my frustrations with them, it feels good to have helped my people again. Thank you for allowing me to help. The chance to infuriate Elganon was a reminder of simpler times. You and Elganon were really tearing into one another back there. I needed to goad him to anger in order to distract him. Mm-hmm. But yes, while all of the Evanuris were monsters in their own ways, Elganon was the worst. Or perhaps it is more honest to say that his were the faults I found most objectionable. You have met him now, heard his voice hammering at the doors of your mind, and you have met me. Can you see how he and I might frustrate one another? The two of you are too much alike. Both of you want to be in charge. I have no desire to be... in charge. No. You just want to be able to correct anyone who's not doing everything the way you'd have done it. Hmm. I see you have been observing me as well during these conversations. All right. I can see how you and Elganon would hate each other. He has always been what I most feared becoming. Callous and uncaring, his arrogance unchecked. To have that much power and no one to remind him that he could be wrong. Well, he had you. <laughs> and I suppose I had you. You said you found the Dalish frustrating. Why is that? It is unfair to them. I lived for thousands of years, and after I imprisoned the Evanuris, I slept for thousands more. I awoke in a world that had forgotten the ancient times almost entirely. And those who tried to remember elven history, like the Dalish, had gotten so much wrong. Like the terrible trickster Fenharel, who sealed away the gods? There was truth to their stories. My rebellion had indeed disrupted the lives of those who had been comfortable. And when I created the Veil, I destroyed an empire. Their judgments were fair, if clouded. I tried to explain the truth to one clan. When I convinced them that I was truly Fenharel, they attacked me. After that, I hid my explanations behind the facade of having witnessed events in the Fade. And the Fade is the realm of dreams. Hard to present that as evidence. Yes. The Dalish had no reason to believe me. I could only watch as they continued to worship Elganon. Though we may have seen the last of that tradition, at least. We would have had a hard time getting out of there without your help. I did not spend this long preparing you only to lose you to Elganon's machinations. Uh, no, I... I am sorry. That was poorly said. You have earned better from me. Okay. When we first met, I saw you only as a foolishly confident child who disrupted my plans. You were... an irritant. I gave you information to oppose Elganon out of necessity. But I expected you to be nothing more than a tool. Seeing you with your team, I was wrong. I'm impressed you got that out without choking on it. If I could not admit when I was wrong, I would be no better than Elgana. Your team trusts you, and you listen to them. It is impressive and enviable. It took me centuries to build such a bond during my rebellion. And when I served the Inquisition, I tried to avoid entanglements. What about the Inquisitor? Does she not count as a friend? She does. One of several I grew fond of despite myself when I was with the Inquisition. 
There was also Cole, the spirit of compassion I helped adapt to our world. He was the only one who knew who I really was. I miss him a great deal. Josephine, the Inquisition's ambassador, was a bastion of kindness and decency in a world that looked down on elves and apostates. Even Cassandra Pentegast of the Order of the Seekers. She was what a believer should be. Faithful, practical, committed to serving, not ruling. I suppose I did bond with the Inquisition after all, as you have with your team. Thank you for sharing that. So, what comes next? What are the gods going to do? Elganan and Gilanane are preparing the dagger they will use for their ritual to pierce the veil. Elganan's power is tied to light and darkness. He will need to perform a ritual during the next eclipse. That gives us some time to prepare. It is likely to be your last chance to do so. You must be ready for whatever comes, for this world and for the team that trusts you. I know that you will do everything in your power not to fail them. So now Elganarn's recovered his own archdemon, and the gods only need an eclipse to complete their dagger. We saved the Dalish, though. That's important. But now Elganarn's immortal, so long as his archdemon lives. And we all know how hard those things are to kill. We killed Razakale, didn't we? After losing hundreds of wardens, and it took a centuries-old trap to do it. We don't have either of those. Not anymore. Just when you think the tide's in your favor, it turns right back. Okay. We always knew this was going to be hard, right? And yeah, maybe it's a little harder now. More than a little. But either we stop this, or all of Thedas falls. So we see it through, all the way. Because no one else is going to. Nice speech, Rook. But it's hard to complete a contract if you don't know where the target is. We found the gods before. Not without help we didn't. So we get help again. We've got allies everywhere now. I can think of a few options, but I'm open to suggestions. Wardens have run dry. Nothing new is moving in the deep roads. And the Veil Jumpers couldn't find any trace of Elgernon or his Archdemon. The Crows may have something. The Untam are moving large quantities of supplies out of the city. Weapons, armor, gadlock. And several storehouses worth of food. What little we had left. It's enough to feed the Antam Navy for three months. Or all of Treviso for six weeks. Given the timing, it seems unlikely to be a coincidence. Wherever those supplies are headed, that's likely where we'll find the gods. Any more details from the crows, Lucanus? They said the Antam have long work ahead. We have time. Also, Biago would like a meeting. At your earliest convenience. From him, that means important, but not yet urgent. Did Viago tell you how much time we have? Days to weeks. Nothing more precise. Well, that's our best lead so far. Track those supplies, and we should find the gods. That said, the Venatori aren't up to anything good in Minrathus. Not to complicate things, but the Inquisitor also wants to meet Rook. Right. With everything she's been doing in the South, we owe her an update. I'll let her know. Despite the odds, we've survived. We've made a habit of it. Take some time. Rest. Be ready to go. Next time the gods appear, let's make sure it's the last.
Look, I had an idea. I figured it's a good time to check in with Eldrin. See how his griffin training is coming along. Want to come with me to Arlathan? Sounds like a plan. It'll be good to see those feathery faces again. Hey, Antoine. Evka. I can still hear it. <laughs> Though it is giving me a headache. Please, be careful. With the container? It's very sturdy. I tested it. What? When? And how? Am I interrupting? No. Our study of the new Blight continues. We know the gods changed the Blight. We think it changed more than they realized, or altered itself after. It's answering to something, other than gods. Hmm, <laughs> you sure you're not underselling the scariness there? <laughs> I don't know. We could try again. And give Rook nightmares? So what's the Blight answering to? Remember the strange call I heard after the Lavendale battle? It was here, in the wetlands. We think the source is out a ways, towards the redoubt. I can tell it's something large, rooted. A construct of the Blight itself. An eruption controlling the rest. What that could mean... Everything that calls the Blight impacts the Wardens. We withstand it, but gods, archdemons, it all adds strain. If the eruption calls the Blight, then it could mess with us too. Spark the calling sooner. We'll lose ourselves, along with the wetlands. Antoine, you hear stuff in the Blight, more than some of the others. Are you... Ah, uh, yes. A little sensitive. But it's not calling to me. Not yet. Like everyone else, I'll know when that changes. Should you have told me all this about the calling? First Warden would have said no. You're our friend. You chase our demons and fight the Blight. It seems fair you know what this means. So we kill this eruption. It can't die, right? That's the hope. Remember those samples you found when we first arrived? Based on our studies, Antoine made an alchemical flame. It's impressive. It should destroy the eruption. Theoretically. At least the last batch was stable. Mostly. But if the eruption's controlling the Blight and it gets attacked, then the Blight around Lavendel might respond. Yes. Its roots are everywhere. And spreading. I can feel them. These people can't lose their Blight experts. I can go after the eruption, while we guard against nasty side effects here. I'll make sure the whole thing burns. Good. The blight poisons so much. Water, plants, animals, people. Some would call the wetlands dead already, but they're not. It's not too late. Whatever the eruption means for the waters, we can leave this place better. It's what we're supposed to do. We'll take our stand in the sheltered glade. Meet us there when you're done.
All right. Let's find the blight eruption. Ebker and Antoine think the blight eruption is the source of the surge. We destroy it, and the blight stops spreading? I don't know, but we have to try. Without a gift, who negotiates your contracts? I do. How do you keep track of the going rates for the detectives? I forgot what I was going to say. Mirda. How do you keep track of the going rates for detectives all over Minrathos? I don't. Mirda. I should introduce you. The redoubt. If the blight eruption is taken away right inside. Let's go. Watch the rain. Watch it. company.
I don't have a good feeling about this place. Then we're all on edge together. Barrier. I bet the eruption's on the other side. We'll need to cut off the tendrils to break through. While holding off Dark Spawn. I'm on the edge. We can hit the tendrils from there. <laughs> A ballista. Well, that could be handy. We're through. And something awful is waiting past the gate. Here goes nothing. What is... Is that the Blight Eruption? Mierda. The Darkspawn are protecting it. We need to take them out. Let's go! Let's get that eruption. All right, we strike and the whole thing goes up. All right, time to destroy this thing.
They aren't blighted. Were they dormant? Maybe. They're beautiful. Much like you. Ah, Rook. Hi. We knew when you hit that eruption. The blight around Lavendel reacted. And there was a sound in it. Like nothing we've heard before. What happened in there? What was it like? Well, I took care of the target, but that was not a typical contract. A story for your crow friend. Yeah. <laughs> not sure how Viago will react to this one. When the eruption was destroyed, some of the bigger tendrils pulled back. The remaining blight won't vanish overnight, but it's a good sign. And this place opened up. The flowers here, they managed to survive, buried, untouched. They have a chance to return now. Oh, that's incredible. I wasn't expecting flowers. It's what we're here to do, to make this possible again. We thought the Grey Warden's purpose would end when the last Archdemons died. And that time's almost here. It's unbelievable! The Order is those of us left now. When the Archdemons fall, some Wardens will hang up their swords. Until they're calling, at least. So the Wardens are finished? No, our numbers may get smaller, but FK and I will be here. Others will stay too. There's still Blight in the world. There's something new calling to it. And to us. There's Blight inside us too. If it changed out there, have we changed as well? What matters is that if new evils show up, we'll be here to keep them back. Do you really think something inside you has changed? It's possible. Or maybe we're the same. But does that mean we'll be the same? You can't sense the Blight. But trust us, it feels different. And the sound is changing too. As for what it means, it's like Antoine said. We don't know yet. Are you doing okay with all this? Really? Don't worry. I'm good. I've got everything I need right here. Me too. You're dealing with a lot of questions. Really big questions. I'd be a mess. Chasing gods, living in the Fade, that doesn't raise big questions? It does, and my point stands. The Blight feels relentless most of the time. We see what it does up close. The world dying, how it spreads. But we keep going. And look, these flowers can make it back. They can. You know, you've got flowers and nothing is immediately on fire. I could leave you alone. Are you trying to set us up on a date? I think she is. But we go on dates. <laughs> Lavendel was named for flowers. They must have been everywhere before. When we get back... We can stay here a bit longer first. Oh yes. I thought I heard birds earlier. Maybe we can find them? The wetlands aren't fully healed. The flowers fought back. Yeah. Pushing back the blight? It's possible. 